Hey there, because I'm Carlos Podcast number 20. And yes, I know it's been actually quite a while since I did the last of these uh, audio version of the podcast. And I, I was taking a look at the at the anchor where I host a lot of these things. And I realized it was the beginning of March since the last time I actually did one of these in this kind of this audio format. Uh, if you've been following the YouTube channel at all, so because I'm Carlos YouTube channel, if you've been following it at all, you would realize that, yeah, no, I've been putting up videos during this whole time, but it's been one of those things where uh, a lot of that stuff needed the visuals and uh, it's talking about different news and different things happening, giving my opinion on various things, reaction videos and all kinds of stuff, having some fun. I've definitely been having some fun courting some controversy recently because a lot of people take it very seriously when you dare critique what they're doing. But that's not the point of this actual podcast. I actually want to talk about something else because the the format of these podcasts is that I do kind of want to talk about more open-ended topics. And that part of the reason for that is that this audio format plays better for it. So if somebody's kind of uh, going somewhere and following with it, hopefully they get something out of it. And it's usually meant to be something to think about. So what I want to focus on in this one, uh, because I've done... The last couple have actually been kind of been almost the same thing. They do follow kind of a more collector centric thing, which is always what I wanted to do with the audio podcast version. Uh, collecting off the beaten path was episode 17. Do your research, episode 18. Influencers and protecting yourself, episode 19. Funny enough. So there, there are usually these themes that fit into it. So this one's just going to be focusing in on kind of a check-in of where I'm at as this far of the year and also kind of looking at the current landscape of where we're sitting and seeing if there's any adjustments or anything we're going to make. I am planning on doing a couple of adjustments and I want to kind of talk through them. I've also got my collecting goals here for the year. So I'm kind of doing a check-in and seeing where I'm at and then seeing what, if anything, I have to adjust. So I'm going to talk through that a little bit with you. And at the same time, that'll also uh, give you a little bit of an idea of kind of what I'm thinking as we go into this next phase. Now, just to be clear on this, part of the reason I'm thinking about it specifically, and I always, I'm always keen about these adjustments, is because I do believe that collecting goes in ebbs and flows, and you have to be willing to adjust as you go along. You can always start off with a plan, and that's why these goals are. It's always a plan, but things can happen along the way. And right now we're in a state where a lot of folks are kind of anxious about what comes next. They're looking at these potential financial headwinds down the road, and they're there, but none of us actually know what the exact precise timing is. So speaking for myself... I'm going to take that into account in terms of what I do and how I decide to approach the next little while in this summertime into the into the fall period. But at the same time, I'm also not really stopping participating in the hobby. I'm just tweaking and adjusting how I do so. Because uh, less than a month from now, uh, I'm actually going to be at the Toronto Expo for the spring version, which is going to be in June this time around, which is a little bit awkward to turn some timing. It's moved about a month from the normal, but that's okay. I actually like the summertime. I like the warmer weather. So to be honest, for me, it's going to be good. And it's going to be a good time to go and hang out and talk to a lot of folks that I haven't had the chance to see since the fall expo. So we've had a longer period between the two than usual. So that's going to be nice. And then again, we'll do the uh, fall expo in November. So that'll be kind of fun, and uh, that'll be the next major show that I do this year. I don't think there's any other shows that I'm going to touch on. I'm not going to cross the border, I don't think, for anything. It would be kind of fun to do, but it'd be one of those things where I'd have to time it out, find the time on vacation time, because I'm going to use a little bit of vacation time for the for the uh, Spring Expo, because I usually treat it as like a little mini vacation. That's just kind of the way I like to approach it. I go and hang out with folks. We go have dinner, have drinks, and then uh, go to the card show and hang out. Even if I don't buy anything, it's it's a fun time. Um, I don't know if I'll find as much stuff uh, during this spring one as I do during the fall usually. But uh, regardless, I think uh, on the channel there'll be a vlog of some kind, at least one, uh, covering a lot of what I end up doing there. So that's kind of the thing to keep in mind. And if you check out the Because I'm Carlos YouTube channel, you'll be able to see the, any of that. Otherwise, maybe I'll give an audio recap or something. I'll, I'll see what I can do as far as that's concerned. Now, talking about this, the whole financial headwind thing that we're looking at, well, here's what we know. We know that uh, interest rates are being increased, which in turn adjusts the cost of borrowing, which in turn reduces the amount of extra money sitting around that people can have as far as borrowing money. And it changes a lot of the dynamics. But it's one of those things where if you bear in mind that it is a hobby, this should be disposable income stuff. So a lot of this, yes, it has an impact. But in all honesty, my what I advocate from a collector perspective is your, your cards should not be a line item on your, you know, your annual. There's always been, there's a lot of questions related to stuff like that because, in, and I talked about it on the most recent live stream that I did, was that there were a couple of questions like, oh, do you want to say anything? Can you say something about taxes? And I said, well, there isn't much I can tell you about taxes other than keep good records and taxes are a fact of life if you're doing anything resembling a business. Even if you're doing it as kind of a side hustle and you're like, oh, well, previously I didn't get charged for taxes on this low amount. So it's like, yeah, okay. But if you're operating it like as a business and you're thinking about it that way, you just, you just need to understand that rules can change. You know, tax rules change all the time. So you have to kind of understand that. Um, but as far as a collector is concerned, if you're operating in that space, well, then maybe adjust your budget accordingly. Like if you're concerned, I would suggest, you know, ratcheting down your budget. And that's kind of a, a good approach. You can also still, uh, in my opinion, and depending on what sector you're in, if you're not into this really expensive, um, you know, categories and you haven't, don't have a lot of money into some stuff, 
you can still make money on some of the stuff because that's always the way it is. A lot of people really fixate on this idea like, oh, well, you know, prices are going down. It's like, yeah, but if your cost basis was low and you were in previously, well, then it's not a big deal. I found that in the, in the case of my last PSA submission that came back, I've had a bunch of those cards that I sent in a long time ago and my cost basis on them was next to nothing. So adding in these, the grading fee uh, meant that I was still able to turn and convert a lot of those cards for eight, nine, ten times as much as what I had into them. So even though prices were a lot colder than they had been, I really had no issue moving the cards. I priced them competitively so I could move them. I didn't try to go to the absolute tippy top of the market. I wasn't trying to squeeze every last dime out of it. So I was able to make a tidy profit on it and it paid for the submission and then some. And I still have a bunch of the cards left over from it. So for me, that worked. But I'm not operating this as a business, but I understand that it's still going to be part of it. I still have the paperwork for it and uh, eBay sends you that information now, so at least on uh, this side. So that's going to be part of it as well. But... Um, if you adjust yourself accordingly, if you are concerned about it, then I would see then I would seek a tax professional. That's honestly the best uh, best approach. So just bear that in mind. It is kind of a fact of life. People don't like it. It's one of those things. People don't like it, but you still have to deal with it. Ignoring it isn't going to make it go away. Now, from the collecting perspective for this, you do want to adjust kind of what you're doing. You do want to take a look at it where you're sitting on your goals. Like one of the things I do is I do the, the collecting goals for the year. And uh, just looking at the list right now, uh, 2018 Topps Chrome UFC auto set. Uh, I'm down to one card in order to, sorry, two cards in order to complete the set, which is what I started the year with. So it's one of those things where nothing has really changed. And the biggest reason for that is that one of them is a Mark Hunt, which might be a super short print because I just don't see it. And the other one is a Sean O'Malley, which is just expensive. I can go get it on eBay at any time. It is available, but it's not uh, inexpensive. It's one of those things where I'm going to have to keep my eye open and maybe I'll get it. But at that point, I'll have one left. So I don't know if I'll be able to finish the set. So it could just be a matter of maybe not just being able to find that card or not being willing to pay the freight. Again, if prices come down, though, maybe that Sean O'Malley will come down to me, and maybe that'll be an opportunity for that one. Next is uh, Mystery Finest Refractors. I'll, I'll get that done. That's not a big deal. Um, I'm still right around where I was, but I've been adding some pieces. 96 Finest Gold Refractors. Um, I've made some progress on that, and I've got some stuff coming in, so that'll be on a mail day on the YouTube channel, so good on that. 5455 Tops Hockey. My goal was to kind of start making progress on that set. Hasn't happened. Uh, I have had some other vintage sets that I've actually started playing around with, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, 54 Bowman Baseball. That was my big one that I wanted to finish this year. And uh, unofficially, we're done. Unofficially, I've got the stuff coming in. So I call it unofficially because I've ordered the cards and uh, I've got them from the dealers. And now it's just a matter of shipping them all to me. And as soon as everything is in and I'm able to scratch it off the checklist and put it in the binder, then that set will be done. And in the same vein, because of that, I've started kind of working towards what I think my next sets that I'm going to be working on is. And I'm looking at probably 53 Tops and 53 Bowman. 53 tops is going to take quite a while. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. 53 Bowman, I'm actually picking up some nice cards, and that will probably be an upcoming mail day. So that'll be kind of fun. So I'm shifting a little bit towards vintage. And part of the reason for that is just because those are projects that I've been wanting to work on. And if there is a pullback in terms of prices, well, then I plan to take advantage of that from that sector. Um, I don't expect those to really push back too hard. I think modern is going to get pushed harder. But again, just keep your eyes and ears open. It's one of those things you're, you're going to get your best mileage by just doing your digging, doing your research. And as usual, don't rely on any specific individuals to tell you what to do. And it's something we've talked about a bunch of times, but it's like, no, you can be given an argument, even a persuasive argument. Great. Absorb it, take it in and listen to it, understand the reasoning behind it. And then you can make your adjustment and figure out where you want to go from there. And that's usually the best approach that I like to take for that kind of thing. And the other one is 63 Fleer Baseball. Uh, I wanted to get to about halfway to that set. Haven't really made any progress on it. So that is something I definitely want to target to do a little bit more of. Uh, coming into the uh, summer and then into the fall, but I definitely think I can make uh, I can make some headway on that. Uh, for the Medano collection, uh, we're making some progress on all that stuff. Certified autographs, I'm getting close. Uh, my '90s checklist is starting to shrink very much so, um, but there's still a bunch of stuff that I'm waiting on. So it's going to be one of those things where those checklists are getting harder and harder because a lot of the stuff that's missing is more obscure. It's not actually expensive or difficult. It's just obscure. Some of it is a little bit more expensive or difficult, and it's going to be basically luck that I'm going to come across it. So we'll have to see. I may not come um, come through with all of these goals, but some of them I'm definitely am going to. So I think it's been a good year so far as far as progress on a lot of these things. But as I said, I'm making some adjustments, some tweaks. I'm still looking for different Medano cards to fit into those uh, goals that I have. But I think it will be a little bit more of a focus this summer and fall on the vintage, just because a lot of the stuff that I'm looking for is kind of dried up. I do still find fun, some fun stuff from time to time, but it, I, I find that I have to look in a lot of different places. It's not just eBay and ComC anymore. I'm picking up some stuff at PWCC, so I've had the opportunity to pick up some fun stuff. I'm going to try to scale back a little bit on some of the extra things that fall outside of these goals. 
I will still probably pick up some wrestling cards because I've been enjoying those. The prices on so the ones that I'm picking up are still reasonable. Um, but again, in a very similar vein, you want to kind of keep your eyes open on that and don't just run around trying to pick up everything. I definitely had some fun with it. So there'll be some more wrestling content, I think, on the channel, on the YouTube channel coming up, because I think the AEW will be releasing its new set Spectrum at some point in the near future. So probably I'd like to have Billy Celio from Upper Deck back to talk about that one a little bit more. It'd be interesting. Uh, because I enjoy getting the insight and background on that kind of thing. So that'll be fun. And then the other aspect of it is uh, we'll kind of see what happens over the summer. Um, you know, Prism came out with this first thing and there was a lot of movement with that. A lot of high prices early. I talked about that, the silliness between the price discrepancy between that and Topps Chrome. And then the other piece of it is that a lot of stuff that got pushed really quickly, you know, got, got kind of um, put back as people started, uh, you know, cycling through. The non-paying stuff kind of pushed the prices down because it's like, oh, well, why is the price so much lower? Well, because the... If you go in, in, and I did the video where I went in and I looked at it, I go, here are the bidding patterns. This is what you're looking for. And if you see that, then you know that most likely something is up. And then we also made the suggestion, hey, if you want to try to minimize that, if you want to try to avoid that, try to bid at the last possible second and only really bid where you're comfortable because then at least you're going to pay a price that you're comfortable with. It won't guarantee that you won't get chill bid, but it will minimize the impact of it if somebody can't bid you up because you committed too early. And that's usually your best approach to try to minimize the effect of that. You can't stop it unless the platform makes a fundamental change, but it helps you. It gives you at least something to work with and uh, actionable is really what we're looking for on that kind of thing. The other piece of the puzzle is going to be, we'll have to see as the the product right now for both WWE and AEW has definitely cooled off a little bit as far as um, kind of originality. Right now, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of redundant and it's playing through. I'm still enjoying watching it as a fan from my perspective, not WWE so much. AEW has been more my speed, but... That's still what I'm enjoying and I'm having fun with it. So as long as that's the case, that'll be fun from that perspective. Uh, but the good news for me in that regard is actually that I've got most of the stuff that I really wanted for the AEW product. So I may pick up some singles for the next one, but uh, we'll have to see. I think I've got most of what I want though. I'm pretty satisfied. Some of the stuff I'm definitely going to hold on to uh, because right now there's no place that I need it to go. And if somebody wants some of the other stuff, then that's fine. But I'm not going to specifically worry about that because... Um, we don't really know what's going to come next with it. And the next product is going to be very interesting because it's going to be a long gap between the two. So what if any impact that's going to have on it? It'll be something worth uh, keeping an eye out on. And that'll be something that I'm interested in. But it's kind of fun watching the dynamics. And that's kind of the enjoyable thing. I think we'll do some, uh, I do have some other ideas for some other stuff that I would like to do as far as doing these kind of talking, you know, podcast style episodes. But what I'd love to get from you, uh, if you do check it out on the YouTube channel, probably the easiest place. If you do check it out on the YouTube channel, I'd like to get any ideas or thoughts. Obviously, things are changing, moving and shifting as we go. I'd like to get any thoughts from you about anything you would like to hear talked about, anything you'd like me to kind of uh, look at and break down a little bit more. So I'm open to some suggestions on that. I have some ideas of my own of what I'd like to do. But if there's any other things that are pressing for you, anything that you would like to see or hear uh, from that perspective, I'd be happy to do it either on the YouTube channel with visuals if needed or something that can be done in this format in the podcast. So I think that'll be it for this one. Uh, there, there it is. Episode 20. Took me about two months to get from 19 to 20, but here we are. So episode 20 of Because I'm Carlos Podcast. It is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever Anchor uh, pushes the audio version of the platform. And then additionally to that, it is on the YouTube channel as Because I'm Carlos. So if you search that, you'll be able to find it. So anyway, that's it for me for this time around. Uh, leave any suggestions in the comments section where applicable. You know, hit the five-star reviews or whatever it is, whatever else is going on there with the audio version of it. And we'll catch you in the next one.